Hello and welcome back. We have a great double exposure here. Now this is a little bit more of that classic example that you'll see online where you have a portrait and then some of the landscape is you know coming into the portrait and interacting and also helping to create that silhouette. So if you're interested in that look, this is a perfect example for you. So here in Photoshop, let's go to Chapter 2, Section 5, Urban Explorer, and we're going to go ahead and open up these three images. Okay, now I'm going to hit Control or Command minus on each of these documents, and we're going to use this as our base image. So let's go ahead and use our Move tool. We're going to hold Shift and click and drag from one image to another. We want all three of these to be in the same document. And let's hit F for full screen. Now in this case, let's go ahead and double click on our background. And I know I want everything to be a smart object already. Let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to right click on all these and then convert them to smart objects. There we go. Just good practice there. Now my goal here is I want to take this, there we go, I want to take the city and make it look like it's coming out of our subject's hat. So we're going to need a little bit of vertical space. So let's hit C for the crop tool and you can use the crop tool to actually extend out. So just grab your top border there and we're just going to click and drag that up and give us a little bit more room. That's looking really good. Now in this case we're going to use a couple of different blend modes. We're going to use a lighten mode and a darken mode on the city. Let's go ahead and turn this black and white. We're going to create a color version of this as well, but to start off let's make it black and white. And I'm going to change my layer blend mode from normal to lighten. There we go. And let's go ahead and get this situated. There we are. Let's hit Control or Command T to kind of decide how large or how small we're going to make our, our city here. There we are. That looks really good. It's going to make up the hat. I think that looks really good. This building kind of like comes right out at this point. We have a little jag up there, uh, like a jog, and then our building comes up. So let's hit Enter. That looks really good. Uh, we do have one thing that I want to keep in mind here. Uh, we're missing the top of this tower. So with just a light and blend mode, we're not going to be able to see the top of that tower. That's why we're going to make a duplicate of that and make it a darkened blend mode. So we're going to use the same image. One area is going to be lightened and one area is going to be darkened. The next thing that I'm kind of running into here is the fact that our sky is lighter than the background of, um, of our original portrait. So we have two options. We can either try to darken our sky or lighten our background. So let's try both and kind of see what works out better. Here's our image here. Let's hit Control or Command L. It's a smart object so we can just apply a levels uh, uh, adjustment straight to this. Now if I want to make my lights darker I can do this by simply grabbing my output levels and bringing them down. The trouble I'm having here is I'm starting to see the hat. If I make my lights really any darker, I'm seeing the outline of the hat, and that really kind of destroys the uh, kind of the the look that I'm going for here. I, I don't want to see the edge of the hat. So let's try instead using my background layer. Hit Control or Command L on that, and let's try making our whites just a little bit lighter. There we go. And as we go just a little bit brighter, we have a really nice, and this, again, you can just kind of click here and use your up and down arrows. So you can see our, our lights are on the dark side. As I bring my lights a little bit lighter, there we go. We're going to have a nice area right around there that just kind of like lets everything blend together. So in this case, we're going to choose like a nice middle ground here. We're going to bring our light levels here and our input to 238. So let's hit OK. I think this is looking great. Now we do still see a little bit of an edge here. So what we're going to do is click on our layer mask. I'm going to use my brush tool and let's just paint black on our layer mask here. And that's going to hide this, you know, around this area of the brim. Notice I'm kind of using the natural brim of the hat here, this little line around there, to define where this is going to be visible. And I'm just going to kind of fade away these edges and everything just kind of should fade together really nicely. And in my experience, a lot of the time when double exposures work, you have like natural boundaries. In this case, we're using the brim of the hat as a, as a natural boundary. You can use the edge of someone's face. Anytime you have a clear light and dark boundary, that tends to work really well. In this case, we don't actually have, um, we don't actually have much information here on the top. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to hit B for my brush tool and we're just going to sample this color up here 
And I'm just going to paint this in with my brush tool. There we go. Let's just paint that in. And you can see the edge of the hat just a little bit here. So I'm just going to paint in and cover that edge up too. There we go. This is the wonderful thing about doing your double exposures in Photoshop. You can just do exactly what you want. There we go. Now I think we're looking really good. Let's just paint out the boundary here as well. There we go. Now, one more thing that I want to uh, make sure is that we have the top of this building. So here's the layer with the building on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Control or Command J. Let's bring that on top of the layer that I just painted, you know, the lighter areas. And keep in mind I duplicated this and this layer blend mode is still on lighten. Now we're not seeing it because it's trying to lighten the background. So now I want to use this layer set to darken. So let's set this to darken and all of a sudden you see everything else. So we set this layer to darken and the top of the building looks good. The reason the buildings on the right and left don't look good is because our image actually cuts off. So you can see in the, this building, it cuts off like on its own. It's completely contained within the frame. If that was the case for these buildings on the right and the left, they would also look good. But because they're actually the end of the photograph, they don't look good. And we just have to make sure we use our layer mask to only include this part. So let's click on our layer mask. I'm going to go to edit and down to fill. We're just going to fill our layer mask with black. So let's choose black as our color or our contents and hit OK. And then I'm just going to paint white on my layer mask just right here to the top of this building. And that really just completes the effect. So we can see now his hat basically just turns into the city and that's a really nice double exposure effect. So you can see in this case we used a light and blend mode to really just take away the top of the hat and reveal it to sky and then we used a dark and blend mode to add that building back in. So we're going to be continuing to get a little bit more complex but this is a great example of using light and, and dark and blending modes in the same effect. Now we've created a black and white version. I want to create a color version as well. We're going to turn off our black and white layer and then my idea for creating the color version here is keep the top in color leave the bottom black and white. I think it looks good, but bring this flare, this lens flare, bring this to the rest of the image. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to create a new layer. I'm going to go to image and down to apply image. There we go. And apply image will take everything you see in Photoshop and put all that on one layer. Here for our channel, we want to be RGB. Our layer is going to be merged and blending. You want to set to normal. There we go. And what this does, you can see it. Let me just grab my move tool and it just takes everything in my entire image and just puts it all on one layer. Now what we're going to do is go to filter down to render and I'm going to go down to lens flare. This Photoshop has these lens flares built into them. So I'm going to bring this lens flare in here and hit OK. There we go. And you can see I kind of put it centered with that lens flare. Now the only downside to the lens flare filter in Photoshop is that it actually applies it to the layer. So you can see as I move this around, it's applied to the layer. But we have a cool workaround here. What I'm going to do is fill this layer with black. So let's go to edit, down to fill, and we're going to fill with black. Now we're going to go back up to filter, and instead of going to render and down to lens flare over here, we're just going to click on this top lens flare. And what that does is it applies the same exact lens flare in the same place with all the same settings. Here we go. We have the same lens flare, same effect, same settings, and it's on this black layer. Now what's nice is we can make black disappear really easily. Just use the screen blending mode. Let's change our blending mode from normal down to screen, and there you can see the black completely disappears. Now this is on its own layer, which is super helpful for a couple of reasons. One, we can actually mask it. So if I click on my layer mask, for instance, like this doesn't look real at all, you know, so we're just going to mask that away. And sometimes I'll leave like just a little bit of it, but in this case, I'm just going to, I'm going to, well, maybe we'll leave like a tiny, tiny bit. There we go. You can also blur this sort of thing. So for instance, if I make a selection out of this area, I could go to filter blur and Gaussian blur. This will allow me to actually blur the effect there. 
There we are. Let's hit OK there. That looks pretty good. And let's just mask this away a bit. So let's click on our layer mask. And we're just going to mask that away. Just getting a little bit more of a realistic effect there. I do like the lens flare effect in Photoshop, but you have to edit it a little bit to make it look realistic. And this is how we do it. Now I'm going to do one more thing. We're just going to create a new layer here. Let's grab this nice like orange color. I'm going to hit G for our gradient tool. And let's click here and just drag out. Oh, <laughs> make sure you're on your radial gradient. Drag out there. And then we can change our layer blend mode from normal to lighten. And let's just like really lower the opacity there. So this gives us a little bit of the like sun flare kind of coming over top of the hat. So there we go. And this is an option that you can you can choose. I'm going to lower the opacity of this lens flare a little bit. So with this color, I just wanted to kind of like integrate it to the rest of the image a little bit better. And I think that does a really nice job. There we are. And I think as a whole, the image looks great. So we have two versions really. We have our color version and we have our black and white version. And with the black and white version, these two layers are not really necessary, but you can bring them in if you'd like. So just a couple more interesting techniques on how you can bring one image into the other. You can really, like in this case, we're using the light to extend the rest of the image, just kind of brings the entire effect together. In our next example, we're going to be blending many different exposures together to create a man in the woods effect. We'll see you in the next video.